In this video, we are heading to the Bayside on the south of Greater Brisbane. This is Redlands City Council. Now, Redlands City Council is a smaller council on the south side of Brisbane, and it has some potentially great investment opportunities. We've been buying out towards Brisbane's Bayside in our buyer's agency over the last 12 to 18 months. So I'm going to share my thoughts on the best locations, the worst locations, and everything in between. So make sure you stick through to the end of this video where I reveal my thoughts on all of these key suburbs. Before we dive into it, drop a like, subscribe down below, and then let's hit into today's map. Now on screen, we've got the core of Redlands City Council. This runs down on the south side from Redland Bay through Victoria Point, up towards Cleveland, over towards Thornside. Birkdale and Wellington Point. Now Redland City Council is almost like a part of Brisbane City Council but it has the Bayside and it backs onto leafy nature reserve. So there are some pockets like in Mount Cotton which are protected areas and won't be built out on and there's things like the Tingalpa Reservoir which has a lot of floodplains and flood areas. So you got to be wary as to where you're buying in these locations but there are some pockets of Redlands that might present great opportunity. Starting on the north, we've got Thornside, Birkdale, Wellington Point, and Ormiston. Now, Ormiston College is a private school in Redland City Council, which is pretty well regarded. It's got sporting facilities, it's got cultural activities, it's got fairly decent academic results. So if you're looking to buy for a family, or you're looking to invest, maybe looking in towards Ormiston within walking distance or a short drive to Ormiston College could be a good pick for you. If you can buy up towards Wellington Point and Birkdale down near the water, then that might be a great choice as well because you're getting that scarcity of land. Wellington Point has the actual jetty out on the very northern point of Wellington Point and it's a lovely area to go on the weekend or for a walk in the late afternoon. Lots of people drive out past the homes along the point here and spend some time with their family and friends going fishing or just having some fish and chips by the bayside. Now just step back from these expensive bayside suburbs are Alexandra Hills and Capella Bar. 10, 15, 20 years ago, these areas were considered very low socioeconomic, but over the last 10 to 15 years, they have continued to gentrify. The shopping center on the inner side of Alex Hills and Capella Bar has been upgraded. We now have the infamous Guzman and Gomez, which is one of our favorite restaurants. I'd love to get sponsored by them at some point in time in the YouTube channel. So, you know, help me get to 100,000 subscribers so we can reach out to GYG and do something promotional. Now, these these locations have TAFEs, they've got their local shopping centers, they've got community, they've got that suburban feel, and they've got blocks on that kind of six to 700 square meter size. There's renovation opportunities in these locations around that 600 to 700K mark. And you know the average four bed, two bath home is going around that 850 to 900K mark at this point in time. If you head a little bit further towards the Bayside, you've got Cleveland Showgrounds and Thornland a little bit further south. Now, Thornland and Cleveland have seen massive growth over the last two years. We've got the end of the train line here. So the train line actually runs out through those northern Bayside suburbs. So through Birkdale, through Wellington Point, through Ormiston, out towards Cleveland, which is the final station. So if you live in these areas and you want to go to the CBD and you don't want to drive, then driving to Cleveland Station and parking up in towards the center of Cleveland and catching the train in towards the city is the best option for most people. I really like Cleveland as an opportunity. If you have a million dollars or 800K, then looking at uh, Cleveland or Thornland or Victoria Point might be a good option for you to get close to the water and still have the access of the train line and the community and the town hub which has continued to be built out over time. Now, Redlands has a great soccer club here in towards the Cleveland showground, so I'm a big fan of soccer. You've also got the Redlands Hospital here, which is also considered uh, a great hospital, and that's public. So that's got some public sections and some private sections as well. Now, if you're looking for more affordable opportunities, you might wanna take a look at Mount Cotton, Redland Bay, as far down south as Carbrook. Now, if you're really looking for the cheap opportunities, you can head over to Russell Island and buy something for 300 grand, 400 grand, but you're gonna to have to catch the ferry out there. It's gonna be hard to get some access to food, to see friends and family. So that's more of a holiday Airbnb style location. For some, it's a retirement village or some people do live on these islands, which do fall under Redland City Council. Now for me, as a buyer's agent, I'm not really gonna be talking about those island locations. I don't think I'm quite an island boy yet, so I'm not back in the island locations. I'm just gonna to stick to the core suburbs that are on the mainland. So if you're looking for those more affordable locations, I love Victoria Point, Redland Bay, Mount Cotton, as far down south as 
Carbrook. These pockets are going to run anywhere between 650 to that 850 range, depending on the property and the opportunity. Victoria Point has kind of notoriously the cheapest cinemas in and around Brisbane. So if you want to go to the movies, Victoria Point's the place for you. But these locations are, again, you're looking for scarcity of land. Even though you're going to be buying at a cheaper price point than Wellington Point or Cleveland, you want to still find scarcity. You want to still find access to local shops, driving distance to the local state or private schools, and finding the right balance for you as an investment or as a owner-occupier purchase. You can see that there's the conservation parks in the middle here. And you've got the Daisy Hill State Forest, which falls into Logan City Council. So as it goes, these might be the pick of the bunch in terms of getting that balance between cash flow and growth potential. But you also got to weigh up that you're a long way from the CBD in these pockets. And you don't have really much public transport or a lot of suburbs clustered around these lower locations on the south side of Redlands. So if you get in towards Thorland, Cleveland, Alex Hills, up towards Ormiston, that might be the pick for those people wanting those that built up infrastructure and better access to the train lines. Now, this has been a snapshot overview of Redlands City Council. There's a lot to unpack in each of the individual suburbs. And part of the work we do in the buyer's agent is to weigh up both quantitative and qualitative data in each of these locations. Quantitative data is things like days on market, vacancy rates, average incomes in these locations, price trends. And qualitative data is things like we talked about today. What's the look and feel? Where's the access to the transport? Where's the access? to the schools, with the access to the bayside or the parklands. You need to weigh up quantitative and qualitative data when you're looking to weigh up an investment opportunity. For me, it's not about one or the other. It's about finding the balance between quantitative and qualitative, weighing up whether you're looking for cash flow or growth as part of your strategy, and then picking the best suburbs or the best locations to focus in and narrow in on as you look to find the right property for you. This is exactly what we do in our Brisbane Buyers Agency here at Purpose Property. When you sign up, we will go through this process of narrowing six to 10 focus suburbs, which meet your price meet your strategy and have long-term growth potential and the cash flow that meets your needs at this point in time. We don't have a property off the shelf that we can bring to you and you can buy. It's about finding the right property that meets your buying criteria. So if you're interested in having a free chat with myself, head over to purposeproperty.com.au. You can book in a free strategy session where we'll chat about your situation, what your short and long-term goals are, and exactly what the process looks like when you work with us as buyers agents. If you're enjoying this series where we break down locations, in and around Brisbane, then make sure you drop a like on this video. Subscribe to the channel down below and click this video over here for more things real estate, renovating and financial freedom. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.